Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! Welcome to Everyone Racers. It's a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit chance or lucky track dog league you run. SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy, when Chrissy, I give you just the tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. And I'm Tim. <laughs> straight to you, bro. And uh, and I'm mental. And I know I promised a new intro. We still haven't come up with your title. Uh, so far, I'm thinking, you know, just uh, Woodslinger or Lumberjack. I don't know. You know <laughs> well, on the anyone, video intro, like we've all got our little things, you know. If anyone has a good uh, suggestion, throw it in the, uh, Ooh, in the doodly case. There it is. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, drop it down there in the doodly do. You know, Obviously, we've got Chrissy. She's a producer. Uh, Chris is, you know, the 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 architect, the, and I'm the idiot. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah, we have to come up with that one. All right, and we are everyone racers. Now, this is a house car episode. It is episode three six two and three six two, according to the California Vehicle Code is the regulation or what defines a house car or a motor vehicle that is designed or altered for human habitation or has a permanently attached camper. Uh, It further defines house cars having an axle able to support the camper and cautions that, quote, a house car shall not be deemed a motor truck. And for the definition of motor truck, you are going to have to wait to episode 410, which is going to be in about three years. (laughs) Piece of cake. Piece of cake. (laughs) Got that one going there. We didn't think this one was going to go to 362. So, um, Chris, we we were actually, we're just talking about this. Life got a hold of all of us, which is why you're getting this episode a day late. Um, And... Chris and Chrissy had stuff come up. I like had to work late, which is just a out of character for me. Not really a thing I do, but some stuff I had to knock out and I barely made this one too. I was literally trying to sneak out, like hiding my face, holding a clipboard. So I'd be like, Hey, could you take care of this one more thing for me? So, um, I'll talk about what I was working on, but Tim, you also have had an interesting week. What have you been working on? Uh, well, I was in Maine. I had just gotten there uh, when we'd done the last show. So I was there up until uh, Sunday and uh, got more stuff done for closing up. Got to enjoy the leaf, the leaf peeping. It was gorgeous up there. Just so, so pretty. Um, then I came back in town and uh, had to pick up my enclosed trailer from uh, Jimmy at the, the Motherfuckers or in Table for One Racing. Um, they borrowed it to go to Road America, and uh, it just took him a long time to to get all of his things unpacked and sorted out. So, I scooped and the trailer have, up. And we have all been there. You know, you're, you're sitting there, you're exhausted, race hangover is hit, and you're like, oh, I've got to go unload the RV. I've got to go to unload the truck. Yeah. I've got to, I don't wanna. Uh, I'll do it tomorrow when I get home from work, which you don't. But yeah, <laughs> yep. And, it, and even worse was, you know, he had to unload all of his stuff out of it and then reload all of my stuff back in it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a double, it was a double whammy for him, oh, poor brutal. guy. So um, I started poking around a little bit. Uh, the, the trailer brakes stopped working on it. And uh, so I'm starting to do a little bit of research on what that could be. Um, also found that uh one of the axles on the trailer has got a little bow in it so we have to keep an keep an eye on that not sure how that happened there's no like witness mark or anything on it so i i don't know i don't know how or when uh but that's definitely it's definitely got a little bit of a little bit of curve in it so so your trailer Um, now is it just the axle that's curved or you got like hella flush going on it's just the, just the axle's got a little. It's probably half an inch, um, 
out of uh, out of square. So we'll see. I'm, I'll probably uh, I'll probably get a, yeah get a bottle just, jack right there where it's bowed. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm problem problem is it, uh, it, it's bowed up, so I'm gonna, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put it put it between the trailer floor and the and the thing, and hopefully I don't blow the floor of the trailer out. That's so yeah, wild. it's got, it's got okay. a little a little a little bow up in the center. So and I was like, I, I oh. must have hit something, but there is not a scratch on the tube. So I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know what. I would think there. a scratch would, or like a if you hit something, it would produce a dent rather than a bow. That is, I right, and I was wondering because you know I got to drive that BMW at Road America, and um, I I got out of the car and he's like, yeah, what do you think of it? I'm like, you could take one jack stand and put it right in the center of that car and it would just sit there. It is so light and so balanced. That is a, that's a really, really great car he's built. I didn't think it'd be heavy enough to bow it the other way. And yeah, maybe it's too light. It's so light, you know, that's what happened. Oh, and it looks like Tim may have frozen. Tim's getting giga blasted. The forces are conspiring against us for this week's episode. All right. All right. So, Take two. Woohoo. All right. Giga Blast engaged. Holy crap. <laughs> Good God. All right. Yeah, well, uh, I also started futzing around a little bit trying to see why the um, electric brakes aren't working. So I've got to start to dig into that. The pins look fine on the plug. Um, the first thing I want to check is um, if I can just hook up to power directly if they will um if they will work and then i'll kind of go troubleshoot from there um i got my shingles vax the second shingles vax which knocked me on my butt but uh gotta do it i I know too many people that have gotten it and that is not something i'm interested in no so uh, yeah yeah i've had some other people i i I remember mine actually kind of slapped me around a little bit a couple years ago yeah yeah So not too bad. So I figured that I got that at three o'clock on Tuesday. So I thought it'd be a good idea Wednesday morning to uh, do a bunch of yard work and <laughs> fix broken sprinkler heads and all sorts of stuff. So I got I got to about eleven o'clock, and then uh, and then I was like, I need to go lay down. I feel terrible. So that kind of for uh, for the rest of the day, but. That's uh, that's kind of where we're at. A little garage cleanup, and uh, we're gonna do some some car stuff. Hopefully next week, which will be fun. Yeah, that is cool. All right, where did I go? Okay, so I rebooted my computer. We started having all the interweb issues on this one. So I I actually got some projects done. I had a uh, mailbox thing that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I sort of I had it built, and then I didn't do anything with it. Oh great! Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep just screwing around. Just <laughs> fucking amateur hour here! Holy crap! All right, watching all my three three hundred and sixty two three hundred and sixty two episodes. So, uh, right here. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Mental and Tim, picture in picture. Nice. Uh, yeah. So I um I, it's it's clearly made homemade, but I made this uh my. Uh, mailbox and this is it lighting up at night uh, and then as I put in the show notes uh, also this weekend the local theater they are doing uh, they were doing several they've been showing all kinds of stuff so on Saturday night sweet transvestite wife and I went and saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show I was actually impressed at how many young people they're showing it again on Halloween which is a Thursday this year and while we were there we noticed that on Monday night they were showing the Lost Boys Sleep all day, party all night. It is fun to be a vampire. Young Kiefer Sutherland there. It's just one of my favorite movies. And you know what? It holds up, man. So, Lost Boys. Still a great film. <laughs> so, that was nice. that was my weekend. Nice, nice. <laughs> without the, uh, without Chrissy to yell news and notes, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna say, you know, uh, 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 it's news and notes time. News and notes time! <laughs> <laughs> There's also that thought too, so we could do that. Now, did you catch the uh, GR Cup this weekend at Indianapolis? No, that's quite all right. Most people 
didn't. But what you missed is the professional debut of Keanu Reeves as a race car driver. He was at Indianapolis Motor Speedway over the weekend. That's right. The Keanu Reeves from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I'm of some other minorly successful films. The SpongeBob movie star was one of 32 racers in the Toyota GR Cup this past weekend. And according to Shafiq Najib at Good Morning America, the 60-year-old Lake House actor qualified 31 out of 35 cars, ran as high as 21st before finishing 25th. Now, this was not the lead actor of Chain Reaction's first foray into racing. In 2009, the Feeling Minnesota star won the Long Beach Celebrity Race. Well, of course, we Very have a link cool. to that in our show notes. And, uh, you know, yeah, everybody can bag on him. Oh, he finished almost near the bottom. We've all almost finished near the bottom. He had a spin out. Apparently, put it in the grass, managed to recover, though. So good on him. That's pretty good. 25th after going loop de loop. Not bad. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So. Well, Jerry Perez at The Drive tells us about the upcoming USGP. If you remember last year, practice and the event and the race was, um, well, it was plagued with enough track limit violations to rival a CVS receipt. I uh, love Coda that is addressing these <laughs> issues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coda's addressing these issues ahead of next weekend's event. First, they slimmed the runoff outside of turns 6, 13, 14, and 15 by 5 feet. That's that's a lot. Uh, then they covered those runoffs in synthetic turf to remove any advantage of ignoring the white lines. The outside of turn 11, which is the start of the kilometer-long straightaway, it's going to be filled in with fake growth, air quotes, uh, it appears to be gravel encased in the form of resin, which provides the same traction loss as regular gravel, but the track is going to be adding more cameras in strategic places to monitor drivers and keep them in bounds. In addition to these measures, the track will also be freshly resurfaced. So let's hope they do a better job than the crew at Sonoma. <laughs> Uh, turns out you do not need to disguise your Audi like a cop car in order to get a new cannonball record. Gabriel Ionica at Autoblog has a story of three new cannonball run records from one person. Chris Stowell achieved a solo coast-to-coast -coast time of 27 hours and 16 minutes. In a 2015 BMW 535. Now, while this is only nine minutes faster than the previous non-COVID record, it earns him the top spot. Additionally, the auxiliary tank equipped diesel earned the fastest time for any of the oil burners as well as the solo record. The attempt was with not without issue. He had a full throttle condition that would send the car into limp mode with a fuel injector fault. He was stopped in Oklahoma, but when the ticket printer malfunctioned, they got him a warning. A link to the article, an auto blog, as well as to the VinWiki YouTube video is in our show notes. Well, do you live in Pittsburgh? Do you like cars? Do you hate cancer? Well... The Twisted Impressions Car Club, Chrissy interviewed at last year's Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, is having a show this weekend to raise money. A $10 donation at the South Park Wave Pool gets you in the gate this Saturday from 11 to 4. This is a great car club with a lot of different styles, strong family connections, and it's for a really, really good cause. So check it out. There is a link to their Instagram and details in the show notes. All right. Now... Tim, you found Speaking this cars. awesome thing. <laughs> yes. So our racing I, junk way to die this week. <laughs> I hadn't either. This yeah. Is cool. <laughs> yeah. So we, I found, uh, I was just going through all of the different, there wasn't really anything super exciting on, um, on any of the road racing cars. So I started futzing around with a couple other things and doing some joy scrolling. And I found a 1979 Blakely Bearcat S1 Roadster. It is a two uh, owner car. The original owner um, who built it himself 
from the Blakely Car Company in Wisconsin. The vehicle is in excellent condition with only 20,000 miles on it. It's got a 1972 a uh, two liter Ford four cylinder with a C4 automatic transmission. It's got rack and pinion steering, front disc brakes, Mustang two front end, power steering, power brakes, tubular framed chassis, and the interior is looks like new and with no wear in it. Really cool, cool color combo on it. Um, all the lights and gauges work as they should. And uh, you'll probably never see one of these at a car show. So no. Really no, cool, no. really cool yeah. car. Check it out. Yeah. All right. So many ways to die in racing junk. They should make that a t-shirt. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to jump on this one because I forgot that we had a rhythm on this one. But lucky dog this weekend for upcoming races. They are at Chuck Walla. So they're going to be moving around in the toilet to make sure that the light sensors, you know, don't turn it off while you're in the middle of a poop. Um, so there's 43 cars. 18 of those are BMWs. So bad. 15 of those are Miatas. There is one Honda, one Porsche. And the remaining eight cars, it's Corvette, a 300ZX, a 280ZX, a 240Z. Corvette magazine. <laughs> a 240SX, a Mustang, a Thunderbird, and a Volvo 544 that is not being run in lemons so check out we're gonna we're gonna pick on that entry list because it's eight you know it's like everything but 10 cars that aren't bmws and miatas but you should still go race lucky dog because that is always a good time yeah but don't bring another bmw Just don't please bring another bmw come on man so yeah, yeah. All right. Recent results, fun! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Champ Car is at Pit Beaver River Grand Prix Saturday. Class F winner was MDR Motorsports in their boring Miata. Class D was J3P Racing in their Mustang. They didn't crash into any crowds or anything. Good on them. <laughs> and for C and the overall, the saline ketchup beat the mustard by two tenths of a second. Uh, the B class was the Money Shift Civic. Hopefully, they didn't do that. And A was Turn In Concepts and Miata, one lap over continuous rotation racing's Miata. That's a mouthful, that name. Yes. Now, Sunday, Class F was won by Boston Winers. Friends of ours, Class D was Eddie Vetter in a Corvette. And C, this time, the mustard beat the ketchup by a lap for the saline Porsche Boxsters. B was Money Shift Civic again. They were three laps over the Hurry Racing Neon. And Class A was RMN Racing Miata over the Big Fish Miata by three laps. pretty good stuff i love i love the ketchup and mustard crew those guys are hysterical <laughs> yeah. honestly i'm like looking at it and i just it reminded me of the theme we did when we were uh condiments that argue yeah and i wonder how much trash goes back and forth with them you, you know <laughs> go stay go stay to somebody's white oxford shirt must mustard go ruin a hot dog ketchup yeah so <laughs> Well, it's listener feedback time. <laughs> All right. Channeling my inner Chrissy. <laughs> Absolutely. Good on you. Well, it, it's probably fine on YouTube's said, you're going to have to excuse mental for getting the rental trailer stuck. He was used to towing the moon trailer, which had seven feet of ground clearance. True. Yeah, that boot trailer would have never gotten <laughs> stuck. Absolutely not. Ah, our buddy Uncle Dave said, Chrissy, I totally feel your pain dealing with contractors at work. Either can't get quotes or they're totally incompetent. Mm, yep. Paul Juan 2521 said, That shifter cable story needs to be retold with Jawas. <laughs> And if you didn't catch last week's episode, that was a Tim and Corey went and stole the shifter cable off of a car that I had just sold to full metal jacket racing who had spent their weekend fighting their two cars. <laughs> they, and they, they were, yeah. they were, they were this close 
to uh, I got screwed, and then someone just managed to find a way to screw themselves harder. Oh, uh, now Carl Man two five seven said we slept on our a- e- uh, emails and got waitlisted for Loudon because next week we're going to talk about the New Hampshire race, and they are not alone. There's a whole bunch of teams that got waitlisted. So, yeah, don't be taking these entries for granted, buddy. You know, not just you guys yeah. on this one. Now, it says any tips on that one. I would just, A, start looking at teams that may not have their car and then say, hey, can I just buy your entry kind of a deal? They said, quote, we fully plan to show up with a car and a ready team regardless. I don't know how far of a drive that is for you, but that may not be the best plan. Uh, they may not even let you through the gate because you're not on the list kind of a deal. The uh, the paddock and everything gets a little crowded on that one. Uh, so I would, uh, I would be in communication with someone on the staff. And yet again, Tim is giga blasting and I, it's all my fault. Oh, wait, okay. Tim's back. All right. Excellent. All right. Are, are we sure it's your fault? Maybe it's my fault this time. No, my literally I'm, I'm, I'm been in getting internet, internet in and out all week. And the first time when you giga blasted, you just like froze. Uh, and I went and looked my routers in the living room and my smart TV was saying not connected to the internet. And my phone was, so I am uh, 90, they're doing some work down the street. I'm 90% sure it's me. Maybe I maybe I need yeah. to be back on you know well, yeah, loudly I mean, proclaiming go. that you're ruining my podcast, Cox Internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cox. <laughs> Stupid Cox. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, if those guys going to uh, just show up on uh, race weekend is a good idea, but I really feel like that's a bad idea, just be fun. man. Just go do test day on Friday and hang out. Yeah. It, it probably it's probably a terrible idea, but you never know. Not doing a test day on Friday, yeah, because the first team that blows up. Exactly, <laughs> there it is, man. You know, uh, bring some spray paint because numbers are hard. <laughs> <laughs> numbers are hard. <laughs> oh. Well, Tyler Stank said, uh, "I don't think trying to lift a car by its tow hook would be a good test. <laughs> My front tow hook is a flat piece of three sixteen steel plate with a hole cut in it." And I'm pretty certain if you lifted it vertically, it'd bend under the car's weight and mess up my front bumper. It's only meant to handle loads in a horizontal plane. Yes, Tyler, you are accurate. We were, uh, well, Pagel said it, and I think he was trying to make a point. And, over, and Overzet endorsed it. Overzet was just going to bring yes. an engine hoist and start <laughs> randomly lifting them up. <laughs> oh. Now, on Facebook, Christy posted a link to their Lotus frame because they got their new Lotus low-cost project, and I am not allowed to buy this frame, but you can, and we have that link in our show notes. It's over on the Grassroots Motorsports Board. Check it out. Daniel said, quote, I say hat car, a first-gen Prius on it, and dominate. Now, while that would not be uh lemons race legal that would be an awesome rally car like why is that prius so fast ah. and uh buddha meyer said why don't you turn it into a fuel can transport cart or a beach buggy to which andrew replied that's what snowblowers are for with a pick of his sweet snowblower powered fuel cart which Love is it. pretty yeah it was pretty dope check that out on our facebook you can always get a hold of us on all of those social medias and we'd love to well i say we tim and i will interact with you on the social medias chrissy on occasion will i'm not sure chris even knows he has a facebook profile because i have asked to be his friend for the last nine years and either he really really hates me or just doesn't go on facebook ever but we interact oh. with us on all of the social <laughs> medias but you know you know who is my Facebook friend and I'm very proud of that fact? Chrissy's mom. And you Yeah, hi Chrissy's mom. <laughs> Hello, Chrissy. I'm Chrissy's sure she mom. definitely she's she's definitely not gonna listen to this one. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Unless it's sandwiched in between, like, you know, they're they're on a road trip and he gets sandwiched in between there. And we understand why you're not listening, but we love you anyway. So Thanks for listening. She was our first actual subscriber and like listener when we started this thing way back in the day. Um, now is when we would just, you know, he would channel his inner Chrissy and yell main topic time. And we kind of don't have one. 
<laughs> and, no, no, we definitely don't have one. Okay, yeah, yeah, there's no kind of to it. It's hundred percent. And, and here's the thing on that one. And you can feel free to blame me. And it probably is my fault on that one. We actually had a really good topic. Um, and we were going to walk through Chris and Christie's new Lotus that they've got and talk about their plans and to work for it and what to look for on these cars and have an entire like ad lightness bunch of puns and all that kind of stuff. But as we mentioned, everybody's schedules just got completely wonked out. And we wanted to at least, you know, do a show for our regular listeners. Uh, there's some people, you know, uh, down in Florida that don't have cable. And, uh, you know, I don't see how we're going to make your life any better. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are thinking about you and we're glad you're all safe and able to listen to this show. So we just did this one. So we don't have a main topic. So good news. It's going to be short. You, you only have to <laughs> listen to me for so long. But Short, I, short and sweet we do have this, uh, this concept around the horn. And this is a Jalopnik article that article that we'll link on this by Aaron Marquise over at Jalopnik. And it was, what is a normal car that you absolutely adore? Cause we talk a lot, you know, everything from the S Sutara SST to, you know, 454 El Camino's Pontiac Solstice's uh, the the Neapolitan, which I believe Tim you got to drive as a Judge Mobile at yes uh, yeah at High Plains. So we've got all these oddball cars that we know we love. And just today, um, the Invisible Burrow Jan Webb's online comic posted a you put it in one of our chats, and I shared it on my Facebook page. And it's it's all about uh, when you can't buy a dumb car, you send it to all your friends because then at least you know where the dumb car is. <laughs> but we don't talk about our normal cars, our normal, you know, uh, even like, I mean, I, I, the Miata is probably the closest thing I've had to a normal daily driver for since the Volvo wagon. Really? I, you know, I don't, I don't like, and I don't think the Miata is that normal, but it's certainly a lot more pedestrian than the AMG and some of the other dumb stuff I've had before that. Um, but I've got cars that are everywhere that everyone has that I do actually enjoy and I like seeing and I I'll go talk to the owners about and I don't. So yeah, just on the spot around the horn. What is it, Tim? You got like a regular car. You just dig. Uh, I do. I do. I have a 2012 Toyota FJ cruiser. Um, they, they, Every every year they did a, tra a trail team edition and it was a um, a solid color and they changed the color every year. Um, Twenty twelve was red. It's like bright red. Um, and I bought that car with six miles on it and I love that thing. It's got a hundred and I think it's got one hundred eight thousand miles on it right now. And I mean it it goes anywhere you want. It does all the things you need to do. It's got a super tight turning radius. It's got hella blind spots, which sucks about it. But that's really the only thing that I can I can say is is bad about about the the vehicle. It's just the blind spots are bad, and because the windshield is like Jeep vertical, you catch all sorts of rocks all the time. Yeah, there's there's big red right there. That's a good looking truck. So, now, Vicky wanted an FJ Cruiser. She just didn't want to pay what FJ Cruisers sell for. <laughs> Yeah, it's times, ridiculous. Yeah, they've got it's a, they've ridiculous got a how much money they they still go for. My yeah. understanding is they're and, very competent off roaders, and that's what you're just saying right now. Said so it would go anywhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And supposedly, there's a lot of noise out in the um, automotive world that they are bringing it back. It's going to be a shared badge with the Land Cruiser. So Ooh. Toyota Land Cruiser FJ. Um, and the, the, they haven't released pictures or anything else, but they've hinted that it's going to be that same kind of retro style like that. But super, super fun car. But my the car that I actually had the most fun in, um, I had a 2008 Subaru Forester, the Turbo. So it's the Ooh. same drivetrain as the WRX in a five speed and that was such a fun sleeper car you would go and, and 
like pull up next to somebody and just lay it down and they'd be like what the hell is this station wagon doing taking off like this and uh it was super fun super fun it was my first it was my first non car vehicle so it was you know a little a little bigger um than uh than a normal sedan and i've been in the in this the large car market ever since oh there it is oh, but yeah. that was it mine was mine was black with a uh with a gold metal flake in it had uh yep there she is the, oh, that's man. exactly the car oh, that's yeah. exactly the car 2.5 <laughs> nice got the hood scoop on it yeah. i've i and i've i've had subaru people tell me because subarus are basically legos that uh yeah those cars are always you can basically make it a wrx easily that's mm -hmm. impressive that's a you cool could, car you could you could straight up sti that thing too i think they made that in um in japan that was a an option to purchase the forester with the sti badge um but there's been people that have done them you know here by themselves one part at a time sort of thing so but two or two of my favorites that's for sure that is really cool uh oh yes oh, here it is all right sorry i'm you know i'm 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 furiously typing as tim is talking and here is the actual that is a really good looking car that is what uh not available in the u.s obs but there it is subaru forester sti yep. yeah cool that is hella cool yeah um, so mine, just like the normal car, I, I loved my Volvo wagon. I still like my Volvo wagon. I don't regret getting rid of it because the guy that got it loves it. And he got it running again. Every now and again, he sends me a, a thank you on the anniversary that he bought the, uh, the 240 from me. Uh, so I love Volvo 240 wagons. I always got a bunch of thumbs up in that car, but just like the everyday normal car could totally have one if I wanted it could afford it and everything i really like the ford maverick the the truck um and i like i work with a guy that yeah. has one and i've talked to other people they're like oh man it's the old the one. old rap yeah. Oh, yeah the new truck neil neil losey's got one he loves it. Hey, see now that's high praise because you know neil losey knows it knows and loves weird cars so yeah that's the you know i always enjoy seeing those and uh yeah i've i've I like them. They make me happy. And I, I will, I will always be able to pick out a Volvo 240 wagon in a crowd. I don't, you know, of course yeah, they're boxes. I really enjoyed even racing that one that uh, Tom built uh, for T this uh, year at uh, high plains raceway. So there it is. What's a normal everyday car completely achievable that you love, even if it's just completely forgotten for the uh, feature in the article, there was a picture of, the um honda uh element element yeah which yeah you know not a not a bad car at all and and people that have their elements do tend to love them as well because you can hose off the interior and everything so yeah my uncle had one and he he was a surfer so he would do that he would just oh. open the door and get the air compressor and blow all the sand out <laughs> yeah loved yeah, it yeah and then the uh, the other one is the and we, but we've we've waxed poetically about our love of GMT A hundred Suburbans. I just always like Suburbans. It's a Swiss Army knife of a car, you know. Not good, not exceptional at anything other than carrying a lot of crap and taking up a lot of space. But it can do damn near everything. And every now and again, yeah. I find myself during lulls uh, perusing Facebook Marketplace for Suburbans. So. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm currently per, I'm currently perusing um, Super Duties, so I'm going to be ah. upgrading my, my my truck at some point soon. I've I got a hundred thousand miles on that sucker too, so it's time to uh, time to upgrade. So I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go two fifty F two fifty diesel, but uh, we'll see. It's one of those cry once, cry twice. I've got the the two fifty with the five point four and. Uh, even just driving it around town, I hate putting gas. In it. <laughs> Luckily, I don't drive it very often. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, the um, Skinny Coyote Racing Jerry Ringle uh, every couple of years gets himself a new 250 or 350 diesel and swears by them, and they have never given him a lick of trouble. So yeah, and you know, I think everyone. Uh, Jeff Gates has got that ancient 250 diesel, and John Pagel's got his super dually diesel, and they all rave about how when you put a trailer behind it it's like it's not even there 
So yeah, there's a there's one that a lemons racer is selling in Georgia. It's an older one. Um, I think he's down to like seven grand. He wants Ooh. for it, and he's done a bunch of work on it. Um, and I. I I hit him up and it's still, it's still tickling the back of my head right there. I'm like, I don't know, man, I might, that might just be my, my toe pig. So where, uh, where in do that. Um, it's on, if you go on the Facebook forums, he's got it posted up there on the forums. And okay. I think he's, I think he's like 45 minutes outside of Atlanta. So, okay. Cause I'm going to cool. be in Atlanta next month. Mm. <laughs> just throwing yeah, that out there. Mate. I may have you take a look at it for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's getting to that number where it's like it's hard to just not throw the money at it and be like, sure, yeah. So, all right. so if you've got an F two fifty diesel, that's a better deal. Also, get a hold of us and all the doodly do, all that good stuff. We apologize for the abbreviated episode, or you're welcome for the abbreviated episode since the two people you want to hear from most are not here, so you don't have to listen to us ramble on for too much terribly longer but <laughs> tim do we know what we're talking about next week and my internet chooses that moment to get blast lotus okay. next week i would guess no no yeah. it's it's uh it's it's rolling up on some of the penultimate uh races of the season it is the halloween hoopty fast new hampshire preview there'll probably be some lotus in it Oh, it is the New Hampshire preview. Yeah. So. so there'll be there'll be some people very excited to listen to it and some people that didn't pay their dues and got bumped that are going to be less excited <laughs> to listen but to it. they'll be prepared <laughs> next year. Absolutely. They'll be prepared next year for it. All right. The best part of that one's probably going to be the potluck because Chrissy's going to be running it. So, you know, go get your potato sure. salad now on that one. And, uh, yeah, Chris, uh, Tim, thank you. Thank you for the patience. Thank you for listeners for fighting through my bad internet. Hopefully we do not have this problem again next week. Tim, you got anything else? That's it. Go, uh, go wrench on some stuff and have fun. Absolutely. Be safe. Take care of yourself, especially if you're in Florida. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you will join us in the world of driving, racing, building, because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. And go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hated us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text pictures of your junk to me at 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook under Everyone Racers, and even Reddit at slash E1R. Thanks again. Until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless, like us, there is no shiny side, then just keep those wheels down.